35 fighter jet are trying something different in their effort to convince Canada to buy the plane. They're in Ottawa making a sales pitch on the street. Now, you might remember the proposed purchase of the planes created a firestorm when the Auditor General said they would likely cost far more than the government had claimed. Evan Dyer is in Ottawa. He joins me live. So what can you tell me about this new sales pitch by Lockheed, Evan? Well, of course, I mean, there's nothing new in a defense company trying to promote its products. Uh, I think the difference is the audience. Usually it's the, the usual suspects, generals, politicians, bureaucrats. Uh, here, Lockheed Martin is doing something unconventional. They're trying to reach a wider audience with these bus ads and ads through social media and so on. And, of course, the reason is because the, the F-35 brand is politically damaged in Canada by that Auditor General's report uh, and by revelations about cost. Uh, you know, Lockheed Martin is still doing the more conventional things to promote this as well. There's a big arms expo on in Ottawa right now called CANSEC, an, an annual event. And, of course, Lockheed Martin is there. They have a big booth. Uh, they've brought up a flight simulator from Texas, and they're showing that to, to the usual people. But they also know that the Canadian public generally got a pretty bad case of sticker shock uh, last year. There was that KPMG report revealing that this project over the whole life cycle of the aircraft is going to cost close to $46 billion. Uh, and so they're here trying to make the case that, you know, this is a really great aircraft. Uh, it's going to be there for 40 years, and, and it's worth the price. Uh, let's listen to the Vice President of Lockheed Martin, Steve O'Brien, who's here in Ottawa trying to make that case. I, I think a fighter decision is, is a big backbone of anyone's national security. So to make that decision, I, I think you need to be educated and the whole country educated on what's the best aircraft to meet the Canadian sovereign requirements. We believe that to be the F-35, and we're trying to dispel any misinformation or myths that are out there today. Now, Evan, the government hit the reset button buying those F-35s. Where does the issue stand now? Well, that's right. By hitting the reset button, they officially go back to scratch, and now they're supposed to go through a seven-step process, and it's supposed to be uh, more, more thorough than the orig original selection process and also more transparent. Uh, but at the same time, Canada is still an official partner nation uh, in the F-35 project, one of nine. Uh, there are still Canadian military personnel working on this, and Canada has already kicked in uh, about a third of a billion dollars to this project. The price estimates for the F-35, by the way, remain all over the place. Uh, we're getting different numbers from Lockheed Martin, who told me uh, yesterday 75 million a unit. Uh, different numbers come from the Pentagon, from the Government Accountability Office in the U.S., our own Parliamentary Budget Office, independent auditors. It's very difficult to nail down what this will actually cost. And I can tell you that in, in all of that confusion, uh, Lockheed Martin's competitors see opportunity. Uh, and in fact, they see this ad campaign as a sort of a sign of weakness uh, on the part of Lockheed Martin. Uh, just yesterday, actually, I, saw, I got this from Rafael. This is uh, the maker of the French competitor, French uh, jet aircraft, Rafale for Canada, it's called. And it's uh, very specifically written to highlight what they see as the weaknesses in the F-35 project. Uh, they've actually hired their own Canadian PR company as well. Uh, they're not at the stage yet where they're going to be putting ads on buses, uh, but they say that they're quite open to taking their case to the general public, too, further down the road.